Hello, Dr. Biology here, and this video is about the required practical nine field investigations and looking at measuring the population size of a plant species. Let's just do a quick spec check. So in the section of ecology, organization of an ecosystem, and we're going to look at a range of experimental methods and we're going to do a tiny bit of math. So don't let that put you off though related to the mean, the mode, and the median. Um, and then we're going to actually go through how you would actually do the required practical. Um, I will say that I don't actually do the video for the practical. I'm hoping to do that in the future after lockdown, uh, but it will give you a really good idea of the things that you need to cover for this particular practical. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to ask you to count how many daisies there are in a field. So I'm going to give you 15 seconds and I'd like you to try and count as many daisies as possible. So starting in three, two, one. OK, so how many did you count? Did you estimate the number of daisies? Did you try to count them all or did you use another method? Well, what we're going to do uh, now is actually work out a quantitative estimate for the number of daisies. So uh, we need to be as close as possible to the real number. So I'm going to talk about this method that you can use. So we're going to look at how plants are distributed. So how um, how many plants you find in, in a particular area and if there are changes in plant distribution due to certain factors such as environmental factors whether those are ab abiotic factors or biotic factors and so there are two methods one you can use a quadrat and we'll talk about what a quadrat is in a minute uh, to count the number and determine the percentage cover a species or you could use a transect line to look at how distribution changes across an area. So firstly, a quadrat. So a quadrat is a square frame enclosing a known area. So it's usually split into smaller squares. So this one is split into 100 smaller squares. So that makes 100% cover. So a quadrat with sides of 0.5 metres gives you a sample area of 0.25 metres squared. So that's 0.5 times 0.5. So quadrats are used to investigate the size of a population of plants, but you could also use them for looking at slow moving animals such as snails, slugs or earthworms. So let's imagine you have uh, a playing field and that playing field has a population of daisies in it and you want to count the number of daisies in that field. Well, obviously, you're not going to be able to count every single daisy. That would just take far too long. So uh, what we can do is we can use um, what we call random sampling. So we're going to use the quadrat to randomly sample an area. So this area, I've I've set out uh, two tape measures. Uh, one, uh, well, both of them are going to 20 meters. So uh, you can see they're at right angle. So you've got the X and the Y. OK, and then we can work out random sampling. What we can do is rather than sample the whole area, we're going to only sample it um, uh, uh, probably about 10 times in this case. So if we're going to do it 10 times, we're going to need to work out well, where do we put the quadrat. So what you're going to use is a calculator. So you would work out the where you're going to put the quadrat using a random number generator. You could also put numbers in a hat uh, or you could blindfold yourself and take uh, take certain numbers from different piles. But as long as it is random, then that's good. Um, and so, for example, X and Y. So in this case, so the first coordinate is eight meters and then the second is 10. So what you would do is you take quadrat and you would then place it in the area that you've chosen and count the number of daisies. So you're thinking, why random? Well, that reduces the error or human bias. 
Um, if you adjust to place it wherever you want, then you may stick it in areas with high numbers of daisies or even no daisies at all if you're feeling a bit lazy. So it's important that you reduce any error. It also makes sampling valid and it allows you to find the true distribution. So what you do is you place the quadrat um, on the area that you have randomly chosen. And then let's have a look at what you do. So you can see it's randomly placed over the specific area. And you can see um, here there is one daisy in this example. Now, because we're counting daisies, you just count the number in this case, the number of flowers. Now, if you're looking at grass plants, obviously you don't know how many grass plants there might be in an area. So this is a really good example of using percentage cover. So each of these small squares inside the quadrat equal 1%. So you can see that the, all of the squares are filled with grass. So therefore that is around about 100% percentage cover. So let's go back to our field of daisies. So what I've done now is I have uh, measured out two tape measures. So you can see four meters on the X and five meters on the Y. And then I can work out the total area that uh, we're going to try and estimate the number of daisies. So in this case, it's five times four, which is 20 meters squared. So then I can choose using my random number generator on my calculator, my X and Y coordinates. So my first one is one. So if I go to one and then it says uh, Y is two. So I can see that there are one, two, and I'm going to include that one as well. It's just in so that's three daisies. And then for X for the next one is two and Y is three. So here I've got one, two, three, four, not going to include that because it's not quite in the square and so forth and so i get um a uh, the number of daisies in each quadrat now each quadrat we've already said each quadrat um is a, is a particular size in this case it's a one meter squared um quadrat although you don't usually get one meter squared but for this instance we're going to say it's one meter squared so the first thing is you've got to work out the mean number of daisies so um i probably haven't done enough sampling here but let's go anyway so you total up the number of organisms in each uh, quadrat so number of daisies and divide by the number of samples that you did so we did four samples so it's 16 divided by four so that gives us four daisies per meter squared. Now we know what the field size is, so we can now estimate the total number of daisies. So in this case, the area of the field, you multiply the mean number by the total area, so it's four times 20, and that gives us 80 daisies. Now let's think back to your counts earlier, okay? So I'm gonna tell you the actual number of daisies in this field and it is 78. So our estimate, so through only counting four squares, was a pretty good estimate, okay? Um, obviously, it's gonna depend on the variability of daisies across the field. You're going to have to assume that the field is very similar throughout, so there's no shade or there's no drought areas, etc. cetera. But uh, in this case, it's a pretty good estimate. Although more than likely you'd have a much larger area to sample. You don't obviously have to do a lot more quadrats, counting of quadrats to get a good estimate. Now in your spec, they expect you to uh, know what median are. So I'm just going to quickly go through those. I know that most of you would have done this in your maths lessons, but uh, it's, it won't harm you to uh, have a recap. So here's the quadrat number. So we've got seven quadrats and the number of daisies. There's far more daisies in this particular area. So just to remind you, then the mean is the total number of organisms divided by the number of quadrats. So if you total up the number of daisies, it's 154 and you divide it by the number of quadrats, which is seven. So that gives you 22 daisies per quadrat. So that's the mean number of daisies 
per quadrat. So if it was the original quadrat we looked at, which was 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, so that would be 22 daisies per 0 0.25 meters squared. So to work out meters squared, you could times that by four. Okay, next on to the mode. So the mode is the number that appears the most in the data. So for the data above, the mode in this case, well, 23 appears three times, so it will be 23. And then I'll just shift myself up there. There you go. And then the median is the middle value in your data. So what you've got to do is put your data in numerical order. So from the smallest number to the highest number. OK, and then we can see the median. In other words, the middle value is in this case is 23. OK, so what happens if you are looking at an area that has a mixed distribution? of plants uh, in it. In other words, there might be some changes to the habitat or there's changes along uh, an area. So for example, from the playing fields into the woodland, there's going to be a change of um, lights. There's going to be a change of humidity uh, and temperature. So how would that affect distribution? So what we can do is we can use what we call transects. So a transect, uh, in this case, you can see uh, in this uh, example, so this is in a sand dune, uh, looking at sand dune succession. This is the A-level students doing it. So uh, you mark out a line with a tape measure. So you can see a line going up into the sand dunes. And what they do is you you can use a quadrat to set, uh, set distances to either count the number of species or determine the percentage cover of plants over a set distance. And you'd also, on top of that, you would um test for um, other factors such as for example it could be wind speed temperature soil moisture uh, in this case they were looking at the amount of salt and ph in in the soil the amount of humus as well they were looking at because of looking at the effects of sand dunes uh, so there's lots of things you can do so it's not just looking at plant distribution here's what i found on the web cool oh, thank you google OK, so moving on from Google. Um, so, OK, so using transect. So I'm going to go through a particular example here. And this example is a transect from grassland into a bluebell woodland. OK, so we're looking at the abundance of bluebells in a woodland from um, the edge into the woodland. So um, we're going to place one quadrat each at each meter along a straight line and you're going to find the percentage cover of bluebells for different distances. So we're going to be sampling along a transect. So this will hopefully show a trend um, and we would also measure other abiotic factors as well. So um, let's have a look at uh, some of the results that we got from doing this experiment. So here you can see the distance into the woodland and then there's three transects. So you wouldn't just do one transect. You would do um, uh, at least three transects because obviously you want to find a mean percentage cover for each distance into the woodland. Um, and in this case, you can see, well, you can see that as the distance increases, so does the percentage cover of bluebells up to around about eight meters and then it is it kind of plateaus stops increasing as much um, you would then need to draw a graph of those results now when you draw a graph you're going to draw a distance into woodland and the mean cover percentage cover of bluebells okay so you can see mean percentage and the distance is on the x-axis and you would draw your graph much better than that one obviously uh, but uh, that shows the general trend. Now, if you're a good biologist, you'll be asking yourself, well, why does the cover of bluebells increases as you go into the woodland? And that's where you your measurements for things like light, soil moisture, soil nutrients, pH, um, and any other abiotic factor that might affect their distribution, um, you, you could do. And the question you need to ask yourself is why is a plant more common in one area than another? And that could be due to things like uh, abiotic factors. So as I said, light, rainfall, 
soil quality, pH and wind speed. It could even be biotic factors. So competition with the same species or other species of plant. It, it could also be affected about how many are eaten by herbivores or whether there's an instance of plant disease. So all those kind of factors you need to look at and examine and, and observe if you're going to look at the distribution in a particular area. OK, so so some quadrat top tips. Let's have a look at those. So they only work for immobile or slow moving populations. Uh, the more data you collect, the more reproducible and valid your results are. So the more samples, the better. So in my example earlier, I only showed you four samples. That wouldn't be enough if you're looking at a large area. Uh, quadrants should be placed randomly to avoid bias. If you're going to take anything away from this video, that is the key thing. OK, you use a random number generator. Uh, to decide on where you're placing your quadrat, and that avoids bias. If it's difficult to count individual organisms in the quadrat, so things like grass, for example, then you can estimate the percentage cover by seeing what percentage of each quadrat contains the organism, and you can calculate a mean. I'm hoping this summer to do the actual video in the field, so please do watch out for that video. I hope you found that useful and I will see you soon. I hope you found that uh, video useful. Please do subscribe if you haven't already to uh, Dr. Biology and there'll be more videos coming soon.